Welcome to Facebook Live. Um, we're here with Mehdi Taifi and Adam Schwartz, both uh, Rollins alums. Um, if you guys want to introduce yourself. Hey, um, my name is Mehdi Taifi. I'm a Rollins grad. I've done my undergrad and grad school at Rollins. I uh, graduated, uh, my undergrad was in international affairs and uh, my master's was in liberal studies. Graduated in uh, 2015. And uh, yeah, I'm a project manager for uh, Robinhood Securities, uh, which is a uh, stock app. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I do. And Adam? Uh, I'm Adam Schwartz. I graduated 2011 undergrad, political science, 2012 MBA. Uh, I founded a company about five and a half years ago, Freshy Tech, that has almost a couple dozen employees. And we make Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth earbuds, and other consumer products. And I'm Molly Dawson. I'm a sophomore here at Rollins. Um, I'm involved in Eco Rollins. I'm also involved in fraternity and sorority life, as well as being an uh, admissions diplomat um, on campus. So that's a little bit about us. Um, so I have some trivia questions first. Oh you guys boy. ready? Some Rollins trivia questions. I'm never good at that stuff, but we'll, <laughs> we'll give it a shot. All right. So the first one is, what motto engraved on campus inspired Fred Rogers so much that he kept a picture in his wallet? So we have it's multiple choice. So A is life is for service, B is manners maketh man, C is fiat lux, and D is set like a gem amid the waters blue. It's definitely C or D, it's C. I'll go with fiat lux. It's A. It's life is for service, yeah. That was, <laughs> a, that, that was definitely a tricky question. Okay. <laughs> All right, I have one more, but I have to say this one's probably a little bit harder. It's more specific. All right, so how much does the fox statue weigh? A, 300 pounds, B, 250, C, 200, or D, 175? I think I know this one, but I'll let Adam. I know it's been stolen before, <laughs> so a couple people had to be able to pick it up, so I'm going to go with 175 pounds. It is 250. 250, wow. Pretty, pretty heavy, mm. pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, why, we'll go with Medi first, um, why did you choose Rollins? Uh, for me, uh, it was kind of obvious, uh, you know, I had, um, I decided to move to Central Florida and the options were, you know, Stetson, UCF, Rollins, um, and, you know, honestly, I fell in love with the campus and then for what I wanted to do, uh, which was international affairs, because um, I wanted to do diplomacy or politics. And they offered that that program, which was great. Um, minor than business, so it was, yeah, it was just the campus, Winter Park, Park Avenue. You can't beat it. To me, it's probably one of the best spots in Central Florida. Yeah, so sure. yeah, so it was it was an obvious choice. Awesome. Yeah. And Adam, uh, <laughs> I chose Rollins. I'm from Long Island, and uh, obviously Florida weather appealed to me. I came down here to Wide World of Sports one summer, nice. or for baseball in high school, and. My family and I visited the college, fell in love with it, and I came here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, uh, Mehdi, if you were given a free plane ticket to anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Wow. <clears throat> a free plane ticket anywhere. Um, you know, I'm going to choose somewhere I haven't been yet, which mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've always wanted to go to Asia, and uh, I don't know why Japan sounds appealing to me, so I'd go with Japan. Cool. Yeah. Ironically, I go to Asia too much for work. Um, okay. <laughs> I, it depends if it's a first class ticket or not. Then, then you go to Asia. Otherwise, <laughs> we fly way. regular class. It's, it's not a long way. fun. <laughs> um, maybe Australia. Australia? It's far away. It's warm. It's fun. It's warm. It's I warm. think. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, the future is an uncertain place. Um, a recent, support, uh, recent report from Dell Technologies estimates that 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 haven't been invented yet. Um, while some all panic at the prediction, uh, Rollins graduates see the future as an opportunity to adapt and be ready for anything, anywhere, and any time. Um, so, Mehdi, your current job was not around when you graduated. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just like when you get started in college, when I just, the first semester, you know, what I had wanted to do is not what I ended up doing. Uh, you know, my, my degree had changed a couple of times and that goes just to say that, you know, you, you always want to be um, willing to, to, to change your perspective on things um, and to adapt to change and based on, you know, what you find yourself passionate about. 
um, because sometimes what you get exposed to initially uh, changes with time and then you get exposed to something else that you realize, oh, I'm actually really passionate about this. Um, and then you want to pursue that instead. So you, your willingness to, I guess, to adapt to change is, is crucial. And with Rollins, you know, that, that definitely, that was a big part of it too. And, and, and the ease of, of change, you know, they allow you to, you know, they talk to you about your, your interests and maybe changing your degrees if you're not necessarily happy with the path you're taking at that time. And, you know, that applies to after graduating as well. You know, you, you start working at a, in a certain industry or with a certain company and then you realize with time that, um, you know, you're, you're not necessarily passionate about that path and then you, you change and then you see what's needed in, in the market and, and new companies start every day, new industries start every day and, you know, you want to be kind of one of the, in the forefront of that change. So yeah. that's what happened. You know, the company I was with, I'm with now, it, did not exist by the time when I graduated um, years ago. So, yeah. So that, I think that's key. Wow. So I'll let yeah. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my mentors from Rollins had said to me early on, the best job is a job that doesn't ha you don't apply for it. And whether it's your own business or someone else's that you're going to work for, the best job you're going to find is if you kind of invent your own job, whether inside a company or your own company. So I think... It's a good thing that people should be looking for mm -hmm. ideas outside of the norm. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and Adam, uh, what did you do? What did you want to do when you entered college? I entered college mm -hmm. uh, three years undergrad, two years MBA, the three two program. Um, and I originally was planning to do that and then go to law school because I wasn't totally sure what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm happy I didn't. Uh -huh. <laughs> And Maddie, what, what did you want to do? Um, yeah, I, I think initially, just like a lot of people, you just, you're just you not really sure what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, But early on, I realized I wanted to get into diplomacy. Um, so as I said, that's why I chose international affairs. Um, Rollins provided a, a variety of classes that you know I could have used for you know uh, as uh, uh, selective and things like that. That kind of opened my mind to different things. Um, but yeah, like you know, down the road, I just realized, you know, um, a, a, that a different career path was more, um, more interesting to me and, you know, got into finance and yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, and Mehdi, how did a Rollins liberal arts approach to your education prepare you for your future? <clears throat> um, good question. So I think for that, it's mostly, um, it, 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 it gets you exposed to a wide variety of, of thought, you know, and, and different fields, you know, you study things like literature and philosophy and, and, you know, um, it just, it really helps you understand, I guess, the human behavior and, mm -hmm. and it gets you a lot more well-versed, I guess, in, in different fields. So as you get into um, your, your day-to-day -day job, you know, that not being so like that specialization that a lot of people go after is great in certain, certain areas, but at the same time, it kind of makes you focus in one kind of yeah. one path and you know with liberal arts it really kind of keeps a lot of doors open um, and and you see a lot of companies looking for people with that type of knowledge um, you know I'm in finance so I know for a fact a lot of employers like you know some of the bigger investment banks and, and whatnot like they they look for people with sociology degrees liberal arts degrees yeah. because they don't want just someone who's into who just studied finance um, or economics all their life they want people that have a, a, a wider understanding of of how to deal with with others and um, yeah so that I, I would say there's a lot of benefits to that mm -hmm. just doing liberal arts doesn't mean you're gonna necessarily just teach humanities or something you can there's there's a lot more you can do with that <laughs> yeah. type of degree and Adam what's your take on it uh, I would say every day at my office I deal with different things from customs seizing a container of our product to <laughs> uh, one of my employees angry at another one about nonsense um, to every aspect of it and I kind of think all of those soft skills that you learn across the board were definitely helpful in kind of just being able to handle whether I'm negotiating and I took negotiating class at Crummer and got my MBA or while getting my MBA or uh, anything else here at Rollins for that matter um, fits in at some point where uh, the many different circumstances I run into each day. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, and Adam, how did your Rollins professors mentor you? Uh, one professor who's still at Rollins, Alan Kupitz, 
I uh, play tennis with every week still to this day, uh, sometimes twice a week. Uh, he always loses. You could tell him that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he plays tennis. So five and a half years ago when I started Freshy Tech till now, every week, the latest problem, good thing, obstacle. We're at tennis, a group of us, a few kids from my class and Alan talking about it, getting advice. And so that's I still awesome. think it spreads till this day. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice. You'll have to tell me about the tennis group right away. I'll join. Um, Please. Yeah. Um, so I guess for me, um, the some of the mentor I've had several mentors in, in, in college, and one of them that kind of uh, comes to mind is uh, Ambassador Haynes. So if he's watching, um, hello. <laughs> um, but you know, it was um, at the time when I was interested in doing diplomacy. Uh, it was it was a perfect fit, you know, that, you know, it, not a lot of places will allow you to have someone in that caliber with that kind of experience teaching you and then mentoring you, uh, you know, day to day. And so he was a, uh, a former uh, U.S. ambassador to Algeria. Oh. He was he played a part of, um, you know, uh, negotiating with the hostage situation in Iran back in the wow. day in the 70s. So he had a lot of experience and sharing that experience with us. And then giving me more of like a realistic expectation of what I would expect if I had gone into that field. You know, he told me how I would have to get into the State Department and the things that I had to do to make it to, to that level. So it really gave me a, a very realistic approach about, you know, that kind of field. And, and obviously all the, the life advice and, you know, that he had given me. So those types of um, mentor, men, mentor, mentee. Uh, relationships are, are priceless um, and it really does help you kind of shape the, the future. Wow, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, and Mehdi, take us back to when you were deciding on a college. What was, you know, the one thing that you knew you wanted to go to Rollins? I'd say the one main thing is the size of the classrooms. Um, mm -hmm. Knowing how some of those bigger universities like UCF or UF or others um, are more, I mean, how many students are usually like over 100, mm -hmm. 200, you know, you, most of the time the professor doesn't really know your name, doesn't really, you know, whether you show up or not, it's, it's not as an intimate setting, I mm -hmm. guess, uh, as I would say, as Rollins. Rollins, you become very close with your classmates, with your professors, um, it's, you know, sometimes just your facial expression, you can tell, you know, the, the professor yeah. knows that you're not really getting something, so he look at you as like, you're you're not understanding something, so let me, ref you know, just because it's a small setting, so they're very much, you know, it's, it's a personal approach instead of just a bulk, like you're just a number, you know. I think that's one of the big things for me. Yeah, for sure. And Adam, what do you think? I, I think you covered most of it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that the classes are small, you get a relationship with the teacher, they know you, you know them. Yeah. Uh, something goes wrong, you can talk to them about it, and something mm -hmm. goes right, you can talk to them mm -hmm. about it. Um, so. Yeah, that's interesting you say Professor Kupetz. Um, his wife is one of my favorite professors so far that I've had. So it's definitely a small world. Um, and does either of you have a favorite memory of campus you want to share? Adam? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to let you go first. Uh, I would definitely say Fox Day would be up there on the list yeah. uh, for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd probably say Fox Day too. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a fun time. I went to the beach um, and then got to go to Disney, so mm. it was a fun time for me. Um, <laughs> Fox Day for me too. I, I can't really think of. Can't yeah. beat it. Fox can't Day beat Fox awesome. Day. Absolutely, <laughs> it's the best holiday. I had to explain Fox Day. I had a a, cl um, a, a colleague of mine that works mm -hmm. also that graduated from Rollins, and we try to explain what Fox Day is to other non-Rollins uh, people, yeah. <laughs> and we're trying to tell them how awesome it is, and they're like, they're not getting it. And I'm like, if, you're not, if, you're not, if you don't go to Rollins, you're not going to get yeah. how a big deal it is, you know? So, yeah. but sure. yeah, I mean, for someone who doesn't know, I guess for people that may not go to Rollins right now, they're wondering what Foxdale is. It's that day when you just have a day off to celebrate with your classmates, and you know, you <laughs> People, you know, at 6 a.m., they'll be running, screaming through the hallway saying, hey, it's Fox Day, because once they see the Fox <laughs> come up. So it's a cool uh, tradition that Rollins has had for how long? For, for a long time. And, That's definitely yeah. something that I notice, too, when I'm doing tours, is I'll have people on my tours like, oh, I already know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I did my research. <laughs> it's coming up soon, right? 
<laughs> it's Fox Day season. It is, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mehdi, what has your post-undergraduate life looked like after Rollins? <clears throat> um, interesting. Uh, I think, you know, after, after I graduated, I got into, I think, like most people that graduate, you know, that traditional path of getting into, uh, starting building your career. I got into finance, um, loved it. Um, but then at one point, I missed Rollins. I missed the whole liberal arts piece. Mm -hmm. I wanted, I, I'm passionate about philosophy, and so... I went back to get my master's in liberal studies while I was also uh, working full time uh, at an investment bank. So, awesome. And Adam, I moved downtown, uh, <laughs> 55 West. Um, now, but yeah. uh, there you go. <laughs> um, moved downtown, started working for my graduate program's mentor, and uh, it's been good since. I yeah. stayed in Orlando and plan to stay, hopefully forever. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Adam, how do you feel about uh, the future? It's good. Your future. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good. Great. Uh, optimistic, at least on a business mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my business is growing. Uh, I love the city of Orlando, and it's it's been helpful to us. And so, from that standpoint, I see it as a positive. I'm curious to see how Rollins adapts in the next decade or so yeah. with education changing the world kind of changing what they do mm -hmm. yeah. do you have anything to add yeah no same thing very optimistic you know I'm, I, I work for a very uh, fast-paced innovative uh, company and um, you know the, with the industry the way it's changing and try to be in the forefront of things like technology and, and finance and uh, just creativity in general so I think yeah op very optimistic awesome um, and Mehdi how do you approach change how do you feel like Rollins has prepared you for that yeah, um, I think Rollins gets you exposed to not only the um, the, the aspect of you know learning different um, uh, you know like different classes and, and being in different classes and learning mm -hmm. different fields, but also the people that you're exposed to, and and the ideas that you get from them. And I think that that helps a lot, you know, with just um, you know exchanging thoughts and ideas and, and working with different people at Rollins. That kind of helped me, kind of helped shape uh, the way I think about a lot of things. Awesome. And uh, Jennifer from New Jersey asked, um, did Rollins help with internships? And if so, how did it work? Um, what about career counseling? Were they helpful? Um, so Adam, if you want to take that one. Sure. Um, I would say it was insanely helpful. At the end of the day, I think a lot of internships nowadays either come from if you have a Harvard tag on your name, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to get a good internship or networks that you can leverage. And I, put yourself out there. I got almost all of my internships from a mentor at Rollins or a professor that introduced me yeah. to someone uh, who I got introduced to, uh, someone who introduced me to someone who now, uh, they're one of my largest clients that does almost a half a million dollars with us a year. So uh, I would say it's Rollins is very helpful with it if you put yourself out there and leverage the network of people around you. There's people who have sold businesses that are worth eight or nine figures who are have free time and want to help and you just mm -hmm. you have to put yourself out there and there are a lot of opportunities yeah Mehdi do you have any experience with that <clears throat> yeah I'll second what Adam just said um, and you know it's the people that you know uh, the internships that I've had uh, is are through the students mm -hmm. that will you know say hey I'm getting into something like this you should be interested you, you might be interested in this and that's how I got a couple of internships that really helped at the time so yeah but okay. definitely networking talk to yeah. your classmates and you know, keep keep your eyes open, and you know, um, that's the best way to do it. You're around all these people that present you with opportunities on a daily basis. All right, all right, that's it. Thank you guys for joining us on okay. Facebook Live. Um, we'll be yeah. back April third. Awesome. <laughs>